Ross Farm Museum, Nova Scotia's living museum of agriculture, offers an exciting hands-on program where children have the opportunity to perform many different tasks, which involve many of the daily chores on a 19th century farm. Children will learn practical things from days gone by so they can distinguish the relationship between themselves and the early settlers. By using hand tools, wood-fired stoves, or a coal-fired forge, students can create their own images of life before modern conveniences powered by electricity. The experience produced will be a very enjoyable one with memories lasting a lifetime. At present, the museum offers eight different hands-on programs. Each of these educational tools will be described briefly to help students to make their decision in which program they would like to participate. The blacksmith shop hands-on takes place in a turn of the century shop where iron is heated red hot so it can be forged into various shapes. While visiting this shop, students will learn the importance of the community blacksmith and how the smithy held a vital role with the services that were provided. Students will see where oxen can be shod with the help of a somewhat primitive looking contraption called an ox frame. Our skilled interpreter will assist the young apprentices with making a fireplace poker or some other iron tool. Students take turns to create one object within the group. The iron is heated using a coal fired forge assisted by one or more of the students turning the billows. Whatever they create, the group can keep it as a souvenir to display in their classroom. Open Hearth Cooking First we must begin by saying this is not your ordinary cooking class using electric mixers and gas stoves. In this hands-on experience students must first learn what types of wood create the best heat for cooking and then create the fire. Taking care their fire keeps a constant temperature. The group will have the job of filling the wood box from an outside storage building. A full meal is to be prepared from scratch, which usually consists of soup and biscuits. As we already know, hygiene is very important when preparing a meal. Care is taken to make sure hands are clean before working with food. As the soup is being prepared, interpreters will explain how and why these ingredients are grown on this farm and their importance in surviving the long winter 100 years ago. Once prepared, the soup will cook over an open fire in the fireplace, thus open hearth cooking. Just as the children have prepared the soup from scratch, so too will be the biscuits. The students will mix the ingredients, then bake them in the wood stove. As any chef will do, it is important to sample his or her own creation. At Ross Farm, this is no different. Students can enjoy their efforts by indulging in this well-prepared, home-cooked meal. The workshop has always played a vital role in keeping tools and implements usable on any farm. This workshop has many different tools for carving and shaping wood by hand. Electricity, oh no, there's no electric hand tools here. Everything is powered by human muscle. So all tools must be kept in excellent condition in order to be able to use them properly. On most farms, family members would spend many days in winter fixing and repairing implements, making them ready for spring planting time. If there were no tools needed for repairs or replacement, there were many other objects to be built. Examples may be utensils or windows. As any farmer homeowner can tell you, there is no end to the work that can be performed in the family woodworking shop. When the class first comes into the shop, the children will smell the aroma of the wood burning stove and use its heat to warm their hands. The hands-on class will have an opportunity to tour the shop and introduce to the many tools and artifacts kept in this building. The children's tasks while visiting the workshop will be to make a mallet by using a few simple hand tools. 
With the assistance of the interpreter, each student will be able to cut their needed material to the proper length. Using a spoke shave, the corners of the square handle stock can be made round and smooth. Once the handle is finished, a hand drill called a brace and bit will be used to drill a hole to fasten the mallet head to its handle. At this point, the handle can be fixed in place and the mallet is then complete. Each student will be able to take their own creation back to their school. Candle making. As everyone knows, the ability to have light is a needed feature in our homes. But it wasn't always as easy as snapping on a switch. Candles were needed. Homeowners had to gather the materials in order to make their own candles, which were used as their main source of light. Here at Ross Farm, we use beef tallow and beeswax to create our candles. While taking part in a hands-on group preparing candles, students will receive information as to why these two ingredients are used. Were they readily available 150 years ago? Or did the settlers have to buy these products? The children will have the opportunity to make two different types of candles, which include the molded candle and the dipped candle. The ingredients must first be cut into small pieces, taking care to add the proper amounts. As the tallow is melting on the stove, preparations are being made to ready the molds by fastening a wick in the center. When the tallow is melted into a smooth liquid, it is poured into the mold. When the liquid is cooled into its solid form again, all candles can be removed. This may take several hours. Interpreters have prepared molds on hand to show the finished product as the candles are removed from the molds. The dipped candles are made by a completely different process using the same ingredients. As the wick is being dipped continually from the pot of warm beef tallow and beeswax, then into cool water, layers of tallow form. If this procedure continues for 10 minutes or so, a candle will be formed. The group will be able to take a few of their finished, newly made candles with them to show and tell their classmates. Farm Animals The Ross Farm Museum represents rural life 150 years ago, and at that time, animals played a very important part for all families. The farm animals had to provide many things in order for the farmer and his or her family to maintain a living. They provided food, transportation, clothes, and a source of income, just to name a few. Offered in this hands-on, students have the chance to learn about animal health, what foods they eat, and how they were so important to the early settlers. Unlike the farms of today, with only one or two types of animals, these early farms had many kinds of animals in order to carve a living out of the forest. These animals included chickens, ducks, geese, horses, oxen, cows, sheep, pigs, and of course cats. There's always a variety of ages for the different animals. Little lambs play in the fields, chickens scratch for grain in the summer sun, and foals run to see just how fast they can go. Every day of the year, the farmers here at Ross Farm have to feed and care for their animals. On many of these days, there are plenty of helpers to lend a hand. Hands-on groups have the opportunity to feed and clean out the stables of many of these animals, while learning the importance of each one and why the breed is here at Ross Farm. At Ross Farm, we have a heritage animal program, keeping animals that fit our time period while helping to maintain these rare breeds. Other facts you will learn include what is the difference between an ox and a cow? How does the farmer separate the cream from the milk? And of course, you will have a chance to milk the family cow. The farm cats may not be the largest animal on the farm, but they do have to perform an important task. The farm cats receive 
most of the attention as children play with them throughout the whole area. Wool processing. Wool, where does it come from? Yes, you know, sheep. But do you know there are many types of wool used for different purposes? At Ross Farm, we have two breeds of sheep with completely different fleeces. Come, let me show you. Our interpreters will explain to the hands-on group the importance of wool to the early settlers and its many uses, starting from the raw fiber, just off the sheep to a finished product. There are many steps in wool processing and it is no easy task. First, the wool must be washed of some of its lanolin and dirt. This task can be time consuming and is meant for warm summer days, so the wool that the children work has already been pre-washed. There is still, however, more dirt in it that needs to be removed. This is where the students have the opportunity to pick the wool apart to remove the rest of the dirt. While doing this, the remaining lanolin in the wool softens their hands as they experience the texture of wool before being processed. Next, carding the wool is needed. By using hand cards, the fibers can be straightened. This process is more difficult than you may think, but it is needed before spinning can take place. By straightening the fibers, the wool can be made into rolls. This allows the wool to be fed into the spinning wheel. Students can complete this task by using the skill direction from the interpreter. Spinning is the final step in wool processing. Each participant can try their hand at spinning, completing the process of wool into yarn. Nature Walk At Ross Farm we have a beautiful nature trail that winds along the shore of Lake Lawson. Included on this trail is a deck that overlooks a scenic marsh area. As the hands-on group walks along the trail, a knowledgeable guide will point out different species of birds and animal tracks in their natural habitat. The hands-on group will learn to identify the differences in trees, learning which tree is best for building certain things. Identifying these different woods and their uses will tie the workshop and open hearth cooking together for discussions when you return to school. An example of this is which wood is best for making snowshoes and which delivers the greatest heat. Inside after the walk or on stormy days when a walk in the forest is not possible, kits are used to identify animal tracks and plants along the trail. The school program. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go to school in a one-room schoolhouse? Well, here is your opportunity to do so. One hundred years ago in Nova Scotia, many of our schools were just like this one, with many different age students taught in the same classroom. Can you imagine having grade 1 through to grade 10 students all in the same room? Better yet, with very little paper to write on. What did these children use? Slates and slate pencils, which are a type of rock. They also used quill pens, made from goose and turkey feathers. Wouldn't it be neat to attend a class like this one, to step back in time? The interpreter, acting as a schoolmarm or teacher, will explain just how school would have been in those days. In this hands-on group, each student will receive a lesson booklet with exercises. Children are able to use slates and quill pens as well. Students may even have to carry firewood into the school, which is used for heat in this little one-room schoolhouse. Whatever hands-on workshop you choose, blacksmith, open hearth cooking, workshop, candle making, farm animals, wool processing, nature walk, or the school program. 
all participants, including students, teachers, and parents, will find it to be a very enjoyable and educational experience. Enjoying education while learning this real living history experience will support classroom discussions on the early settlers in Nova Scotia. There will be wagon or sleigh rides, depending on the season, available that same day. It is always a delight for the children to participate on this ride, giving them the opportunity to see the whole farm. Let Ross Farm serve you with this unique opportunity of hands-on learning.